Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson today. We're going to be going over another integration by parts problem. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to use integration by parts twice in the same problem. And I'm going to show you how to do that using this example here, the integral from 0 to pi of x squared cosine x dx. So I've already done a, another integration by parts twice kind of problem, but this one's a little different because here we have a definite integral. If you want to check that out, I'll put a, a thing up in the corner where you can click on that or a link down in the description as well. Um, but this one's going to actually end up working out a little bit differently. Um, and it's going to use the formula from my Calculus 2 study guide, which there's a link down in the description if you want to check out that study guide. should make studying and homework a lot easier for you if you're taking an integral calculus class. But the, the formula we're going to be using is the integration by parts formula. Um, specifically the one having to do with definite integrals and having actual bounds on your integrals. So I'm going to show you how to use that. Basically, whenever you're doing an integration by parts problem, the first thing you want to do is figure out which piece you want to call u and which part you want to call dv. Because what we're going to do is we're going to think of our integral as the integral of u times dv, and we're going to be able to use our integration by parts formula to rewrite this as u times v minus the integral of v times du. So when you're doing this, what you want to think about is which thing would be easier to take the derivative versus the antiderivative of. And whichever one you'd rather take the derivative of, you're going to call u, and whichever part you'd rather take the antiderivative of, you're going to call dv. So let's think about our two pieces of our formula here. We have obviously x squared and cosine x. We're going to have to take the derivative of one of these and the antiderivative of the other one. So let's think about x squared. If we take the derivative of x squared, Basically, we're going to be able to do this using the power rule. We're going to change it to some, it's going to end up being some constant times x, right? We're going to lower our power by 1, making it something times x. If we take the antiderivative, again, we can use the power rule, but that's going to raise our power by 1, making it some constant times x to the third. So our derivative is just going to be x times a constant. Our antiderivative is x cubed times a constant. Typically, when you're comparing those two things, it's usually going to be easier to deal with lower powered x's than higher powered x's. So x times a constant is probably going to be preferred over x cubed times a constant. But let's think about our cosine x term first before we commit to that, because maybe we would rather take the derivative of cosine and just kind of deal with the x cubed. But let's think about it for a second. So cosine x, if we take the derivative of cosine x, we're going to get negative sine x. If we take the antiderivative of cosine x, we're going to get positive sine x. So whether we take the antiderivative or the derivative of cosine x, we're just going to get sine x either negative or positive. So again, it's just going to be sine x times some constant. So with the cosine x piece, it really doesn't make a difference whether we integrate or differentiate that because it's going to be equally as complicated. But the x squared term is going to be much simpler if we take the derivative rather than the antiderivative. And that's just because the result is going to be a lower powered x. So if we take the, we want to take the derivative of x squared, so we're going to call that our u, and we want to take the antiderivative of cosine x, so we want to call that dv. So once you've figured that out, your next step of integration by parts is to figure out your other pieces, right? We have u and dv. We need to use these to figure out dv, or I'm sorry, du and v. So du is always just going to be the derivative of u. Well, the u is x squared. The derivative of x squared is just 2x. And then we'll throw our dx on there. And then the v is just going to be the antiderivative of cosine x. And the antiderivative of cosine x is just sine x. So our v is going to be sine x. Our du is going to be 2x dx. And now we can plug these four pieces into our integration by parts formula. So we can rewrite this integral. And you know specifically, we want to use uh, the version of integration by parts that actually has bounds. So if we have the integral from a to b of this thing, we're going to get u times v evaluated from a to b minus the integral of v du again with bounds a to b. So basically we are just kind of carrying these bounds through this integration by parts formula. So doing that we're going to be able to rewrite u times dv as uv which is going to be x squared times sine of x evaluated from 0 to pi minus the integral of v du which is going to be sine x 
times 2x, so minus the integral of 2x sine x dx, and again, that's gonna be evaluated from zero to pi. The issue here is this integral that we've acquired using this integration by parts formula is still not really something that we can solve. We don't really know how to integrate this quite yet. Because again, we kind of have these two pieces being multiplied together. We aren't really in that much better of a position. However, one thing to point out is now we have this lower power of x. So what we could think about is if we were to apply this integration by parts a second time and lower our power of x again, that might leave us with something that's easy to integrate. So again, we want to call this same piece that we did before our u because we want to take the derivative of it. And then we'll call this other piece our dv. And if we apply this integration by parts formula again, just to this little integral right here, we should be able to kind of simplify it further. So again, we're gonna to need to basically just carry this piece down over here. So we're gonna have x squared sine of x evaluated from zero to pi minus, and then we're going to apply our integration by parts formula to just this little integral to see what that would be equal to. So again, we figured out our u and our dv. We need to figure out our du and our v. Our du is just the derivative of u u is 2x, so the derivative of 2x is just 2. And then our antiderivative of dv is going to give us v. The antiderivative of sine x would just be negative cosine x. So now we can use these four pieces here, plug it into this integration by parts formula. We can rewrite this integral as u times v, so 2x times negative cosine x. evaluated from zero to pi minus the integral of v du minus the integral of v du which is going to be two times negative cosine x so negative two cosine x dx and again we need to maintain our bounds of zero to pi so now this integral is a little bit easier to evaluate because what we can do is we can pull our negative two constant out front of here, right? So we can just move our negative two out in front of our integral because you can pull a constant out of an integral. The negatives are gonna cancel and then we're just gonna have a constant two out there. So now we just need to integrate cosine x. Well, the integral of cosine x is just sine x. So this integral here is just gonna be sine x evaluated from zero to pi. And then the rest of this equation is just gonna kinda carry down in. So now we've rewritten this integral that we started with in terms of you know, no more integrals. We've gotten rid of all of our integrals. And notice all these pieces here are being evaluated from zero to pi. So we can basically kind of simplify it down and just say the whole thing is being evaluated from zero to pi. So doing that, I mean, you know, we could basically just say x squared sine of x, this negative will have to distribute to both of these pieces here. So that'll be plus two x cosine x And then the negative will distribute here, minus 2 times sine x. And then basically this whole thing is being evaluated from 0 to pi. So to evaluate from 0 to pi, we'll just plug in pi into all these pieces for x, plug in 0 into all the x's, and then subtract the 2. So plugging in pi, first of all, we're going to get pi squared times sine of pi. Well, sine of pi is 0. So this whole term is actually just going to be 0 cosine of pi is negative one. So when we plug pi into this term here, we're gonna get two pi times negative one, so negative two pi. And then again, sine of pi is zero, so this term is just gonna be zero. So plugging in pi into this whole thing is just gonna give us negative two pi. And then plugging in zero into all this, again, these sine terms, sine of zero is zero. So these sine terms are gonna zero out. We're just gonna get minus plugging in zero here is just gonna be cosine of zero is one times zero is again zero. 
So evaluating this whole thing from zero to pi is just gonna give us negative two pi. So like I said, this, uh, this formula is on my Calc 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description, so you can go grab that for yourself. It's available for instant download. You can print it out, have it available as you study and work through homework and all that. Should be a huge help to you, so go check that out. Just click down in the description, there's a link. Thanks, and see you next time.